the Chinatown centered on Grand Avenue and Stockton Street in San Francisco, California, is the oldest Chinatown in North America and the second largest Chinese community outside Asia. It is the oldest of the four notable Chinatowns in the city. Since its establishment in 1848, it has been highly important and influential in the history and culture of ethnic Chinese immigrants in North America. Chinatown is an enclave that continues to retain its own customs, languages, places of worship, social clubs, and identity. There are two hospitals, numerous parks and squares, a post office, and other infrastructure. While recent immigrants and the elderly choose to live in here because of the availability of affordable housing and their familiarity with the culture, the place is also a major tourist attraction, drawing more visitors annually than the Golden Gate Bridge. Geography and Location Chinatown has been traditionally defined by the neighborhoods of North Beach and Telegraph Hill areas as bound by Bush Street, Taylor Street, Bay Street, and the water. Officially, Chinatown is located in downtown San Francisco, covers 24 square blocks, and overlaps five postal zip codes. It is within an area of roughly one mile long by 1.34 miles wide. The current boundary is roughly Montgomery Street, Columbus Avenue and the city's financial district in the east, Union Street and North Beach in the north all the way to its northernmost point from the intersection of Jones Street and Lombard Street in Russian Hill to Lombard Street and Grand Avenue in Telegraph Hill. The southeast is bounded by Bush Street with Union Square. Within Chinatown there are two major thoroughfares. One is Grant Avenue, with the Dragon Gate on the intersection of Bush Street and Grand Avenue St. Mary's Square with a statue of Dr. Sun Yat-sen by Benjamin Buffano a war memorial to Chinese war veterans, and stores, restaurants and mini malls that cater mainly to tourists. The other, Stockton Street, is frequented less often by tourists, and it presents an authentic Chinese look and feel, reminiscent of Hong Kong, with its produce and fish markets, stores, and restaurants. It is dominated by mixed-use buildings that are three to four stories high, with shops on the ground floor and residential apartments upstairs. A major focal point in Chinatown is Portsmouth Square. Since it is one of the few open spaces in Chinatown and sits above a large underground parking lot, Portsmouth Square bustles with activity such as Tai Chi and old men playing Chinese chess. A replica of the Goddess of Democracy used in the Tiananmen Square protest was built in 1999 by Thomas Marsh, and stands in the square. It is made of bronze and weighs approximately 600 pounds. Demographics According to the San Francisco Planning Department, Chinatown is the most densely populated urban area west of Manhattan, with 15,000 residents living in 20 square blocks. In the 1970s, the population density in Chinatown was seven times the San Francisco average. The estimated total population in the 2000 census was at 100,574 residents. It is also one of the more working class sections of the city, with neighborhood median household incomes averaging out at $42,153, though higher than the national average, is still lower than the citywide average income of $73,798. Equals demographic history equals. Working-class Hong Kong Chinese immigrants began arriving in large numbers in the 1960s. Despite their status and professional qualifications in Hong Kong, many took low-paying employment in restaurants and garment factories in Chinatown because of limited English. An increase in Cantonese-speaking immigrants from Hong Kong and mainland China has gradually led to the replacement in Chinatown of the hoisanese tashanese dialect by the standard Cantonese dialect. Due to such overcrowding and poverty, other Chinese areas have been established within the city of San Francisco proper, including one in its Richmond and three more in its Sunset districts, as well as a recently established one in the Visitation Valley neighborhood. These outer neighborhoods have been settled largely by Chinese from Southeast Asia. There are also many suburban Chinese communities in the San Francisco Bay Area, especially in Silicon Valley, such as Cupertino, Fmont, and Milpitas, where Taiwanese Americans are dominant. Despite these developments, many continue to commute in from these outer neighborhoods and cities to shop in Chinatown, 
causing gridlock on roads and delays in public transit, especially on weekends. To address this problem, the local public transit agency, Muni, is planning to extend the city's subway network to the neighborhood via the new central subway. Unlike in most Chinatowns in the United States, ethnic Chinese refugees from Vietnam have not established businesses in San Francisco's Chinatown district, due to high property values and rents. Instead, many Chinese Vietnamese are Euro as opposed to ethnic Vietnamese who tended to congregate in larger numbers in San Jose a Euro have established a separate Vietnamese enclave on Larkin Street in the heavily working class Tenderloin district of San Francisco, where it is now known as the city's Little Saigon, and not as a Chinatown per se. History equals Early history equals San Francisco's Chinatown was the port of entry for early Hoysanese and Zongshanese Chinese immigrants from the Guangdong province of southern China from the 1850s to the 1900s. The area was the one geographical region deeded by the city government and private property owners which allowed Chinese persons to inherit and inhabit dwellings within the city. The majority of these Chinese shopkeepers, restaurant owners, and hired workers in San Francisco Chinatown were predominantly Hoysanese and male. Many Chinese found jobs working for large companies seeking a source of labor, most famously as part of the Central Pacific on the Transcontinental Railroad. Other early immigrants worked as mine workers or independent prospectors hoping to strike it rich during the 1849 gold rush. Artoy Artoy was a Cantonese prostitute and madam in San Francisco during the California Gold Rush, and purportedly the first Chinese prostitute in San Francisco. Arriving from Hong Kong in 1849, she quickly became the most well-known Asian woman in the Old West. She reportedly was a tall, attractive woman with bound feet. When Artoy left China for the United States, she originally traveled with her husband, who died during the voyage. Toy became the mistress of the ship's captain, who showered gold upon her, so much so that by the time she arrived in San Francisco in the 1840s, Toy had a fair bit of money. Noticing the looks she drew from the men in her new town, she figured they would pay for a closer look. Her peep shows became quite successful, and she eventually became a high-priced prostitute. In 1850, Toy opened a chain of brothels at 34 and 36 Waverly Place in Chinatown, importing girls from China as young as 11 years old to work in them. Towards the end of her life she supposedly returned to China a wealthy woman to live the rest of her days in comfort, but came back to California not long afterward. From 1868 until her death in 1928, she lived a quiet life in Santa Clara County, returning to public attention only upon dying three months short of her hundredth birthday in San Jose equals 1870s to the 1906 earthquake equals, with nationwide unemployment in the wake of the Panic of 1873, racial tensions in the city boiled over into full-blown race riots. In response to the violence, the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association, also known as the Chinese Six Companies, which evolved out of the labor recruiting organizations for different areas of Guangdong, was created to provide the community with a unified voice. The heads of these companies advocated for the Chinese community to the wider business community as a whole and to the city government. Anti-immigrant sentiment became law as the United States government passed the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 a Euro the first immigration restriction law aimed at a single ethnic group. This law, along with other immigration restriction laws such as the Geary Act, greatly reduced the numbers of Chinese allowed into the country and the city and in theory limited Chinese immigration to single males only. Exceptions were in fact granted to the families of wealthy merchants, but the law was still enough to reduce the population of the neighborhood to an all-time low in the 1920s. The Chinese Exclusion Act was repealed during World War II by the Magnuson Act in recognition of the important role of China as an ally in the war, but tight quotas still applied. As in much of San Francisco, a period of criminality ensued in some tongs based on smuggling, gambling and prostitution. By the early 1880s, the population had adopted the term Tong War to describe periods of violence in Chinatown and the San Francisco Police Department had established its so-called Chinatown Squad. One of the more successful sergeants, Jack Manion, 
was appointed in 1921 and served for two decades. The squad was finally disbanded in August 1955 by police chief George Healy, upon the request of the influential Chinese World newspaper, which had editorialized that the squad was an affront to Americans of Chinese descent. Tong Wars, from the mid-1870s, Tong Wars sprang up over turf battles concerning criminal enterprises. At the height of the criminal Tongs during the 1880s and 1890s, 20 to 30 Tongs ran highly profitable gambling houses, brothels, opium dens, and slave trade enterprises in Chinatown. Overcrowding, segregation, graft, and the lack of governmental control contributed to conditions that sustained the criminal tongs until the early 1920s. Chinatown's isolation and compact geography intensified the criminal behavior that terrorized the community for decades despite efforts by the six companies and police city officials to stem the tide. Bubonic Plague in March 1900, a Chinese-born man who was a long-time resident of Chinatown was found dead of bubonic plague. The next morning, all of Chinatown was quarantined, with policemen preventing Asiatics from either entering or leaving. The San Francisco Board of Health began looking for more cases of plague and began burning personal property and sanitizing buildings, streets and sewers within Chinatown. Chinese Americans protested and the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association threatened lawsuits. The quarantine was lifted but the burning and fumigating continued. A federal court ruled that public health officials could not close off Chinatown without any proof that Chinese Americans were any more susceptible to plague than Anglo-Americans. However, the delays caused by the political infighting probably allowed the plague to spread, and gave the plague its first foothold in North America. The four-year death toll of the plague was 113 people, almost all from a 10-block area of Chinatown. Equals 1906 to the 1960s equals, the Chinatown neighborhood was completely destroyed in the 1906 earthquake that leveled most of the city. As the city rebuilt afterwards, certain city officials and real estate developers hatched plans to move Chinatown to the Hunters Point neighborhood at the southern edge of the city, or even further south to Daly City. Abe Roof, the political boss widely considered to be the power behind Mayor Eugene Schmitz, invited himself to become part of the Committee of Fifty and formed an additional subcommittee on relocating the Chinese, because he felt the land was too valuable for Chinese. These plans failed as the Chinese convinced the city government to relent. When the earthquake destroyed Chinatown's wooden tenements, it also dealt a death blow to the Tongs. Criminal tongs continued on until the 1920s, but after the earthquake legitimate Chinese merchants and a more capable police force under Jack Manion gained the upper hand. Stiffer legislation against prostitution and drugs ended the tongs. The famous Sam O restaurant opened in 1912. Many early Chinese immigrants to San Francisco and beyond were processed at Angel Island, in the San Francisco Bay, which is now a state park. Unlike Ellis Island on the East Coast where prospective European immigrants might be held for up to a week, Angel Island typically detained Chinese immigrants for months while they were interrogated closely to validate their papers. The detention facility was renovated in 2005 and 2006 under a federal grant. The repeal of the Exclusion Act and the other immigration restriction laws, in conjunction with passage of the War Brides Act allowed Chinese-American veterans to bring their families outside of national quotas and led to a major population boom in the area during the 1950s. On September 30, 1955, Chief George Healy asked for disbanding of the Chinatown Squad, upon request of influential Chinese World newspaper, which states that Squad is an affront to Americans of Chinese descent. Frank Wong Dioramas San Francisco artist Frank Wong created miniature dioramas that depict Chinatown during the 1930s and 1940s. In 2004, Wong donated seven miniatures of scenes of Chinatown, titled A Euro Oe The Chinatown Miniatures Collection, A Euro to Chinese Historical Society of America. The dioramas are on permanent display in XOR Euro Unregistered Trademark S Main Gallery, 1. A Euro Oe The Moon Fstivler 2 Euros. A Euro OE Shoeshine Stand at 3 Euros. A Euro OE Chinese New Year of 4 Euros.
A Euro OE Chinese Laundry R5 Euros. A Euro OE Christmas Senior 6 Euros. A Euro OE Single Roma 7 Euros. A Euro OE Herb Story A Euro. Equals 1960s R Euro present equals, in the 1960s. The shifting of underutilized national immigration quotas brought in another huge wave of immigrants, mostly from Hong Kong. This changed San Francisco Chinatown from predominantly Seyipwa, Cantonese sub dialect of Hoisin, and three other towns, speaking to Sam Yipwa, major Cantonese, speaking. During the same decade, many stores moved from Grand Avenue to Stockton Street. Drawn by lower rents and the better transportation enabled by the 30 Stockton Muni trolley bus line. The end of the Vietnam War brought a wave of Vietnamese refugees of Chinese descent, who put their own stamp on San Francisco Chinatown. There were areas where many Chinese in Northern California living outside of San Francisco Chinatown could maintain small communities or individual businesses, but except for in Oakland, they did not set up any special town with shopping and restaurants. Nonetheless, the historic rights of property owners to deed or sell their property to whomever they pleased was exercised enough to keep the Chinese community from spreading. However, in Shelley v. Kramer, the Supreme Court had ruled it unconstitutional for property owners to exclude certain groups when deeding their rights. This ruling allowed the enlargement of Chinatown and an increase in the Chinese population of the city. At the same time, the declining white population of the city is a result of white flight combined to change the demographics of the city. Neighborhoods that were once predominantly white, such as Richmond District and Sunset District and in other suburbs across the San Francisco Bay Area became centers of new Chinese immigrant communities. This included new immigrant groups such as Mandarin-speaking immigrants from Taiwan who have tended to settle in suburban Milbrae, Cupertino, Milpitas, and Mountain View a Euro avoiding San Francisco as well as Oakland entirely. This suburbanization continues today. Triad violence, with these changes came a weakening of the Tong's traditional grip on Chinese life. Newer Chinese groups often came from areas outside of the Tong's control, so the influence of the Tong's and criminal groups associated with them, such as the Triads, grew weaker in Chinatown and the Chinese community. However, the presence of the triads remained significant in the immigrant community, and in the summer of 1977, an ongoing rivalry between two triads erupted in violence and bloodshed, culminating in a shooting spree at the Golden Dragon restaurant on Washington Street. Five people were killed and eleven wounded, none of whom were gang members. The incident has become infamously known as the Golden Dragon Massacre. Five perpetrators, who were members of the Joe Boys gang, were convicted of murder and assault charges and were sentenced to prison. The Golden Dragon closed in January 2006 because of health violations, and later reopened as the Imperial Palace Restaurant. Other notorious acts of violence have taken place in Chinatown. In May 1990, San Francisco residents who had just left the Purple Onion nightclub at the edge of Chinatown at 2 a.m. were fired upon as they entered their cars. 35-year-old Michael Bit Chen Wu was killed and six other people were injured, one of them a pregnant woman who was critically injured. In June 1998, shots were fired at Chinese playground, wounding six teenagers, three of them critically. A 16-year-old boy was arrested for the shooting, which was believed to be gang-related. Culture equals Institutions equals San Francisco's Chinatown is home to the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association, which is the umbrella organization for local Chinese family and regional associations in Chinatown. It has spawned lodges in other Chinatowns in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, including Chinatown, Los Angeles and Chinatown, Portland. The Chinese Culture Center is a community-based nonprofit organization located on the third floor of a Holiday Inn. The center promotes exhibitions about Chinese life in the United States and organizes tours of the area. The Chinese Historical Society of America is located on Clay. Equals Autumn Moon Festival equals, San Francisco Chinatown's annual Autumn Moon Festival celebrates seasonal change and the opportunity to give thanks to a bountiful summer harvest. The Moon Festival is popularly celebrated throughout China and surrounding countries each year, with local bazaars, 
entertainment, and mooncakes, the pastry filled with sweet bean paste and egg. The festival is held each year during mid-September, and is free to the public. Equals Chinatown Community Development Center Equals, Chinatown Community Development Center is an organization formed in 1977 after the merger of the Chinatown Resource Center and the Chinese Community Housing Corporation. The organization was started by Gordon Chin, who served as executive director since 1977 until he was succeeded by the organization's deputy director Reverend Norman Fong on October 1, 2011. The organization advocates and provides services to San Francisco's Chinatown. They have also started many groups, Adopt an Alleyway Youth Empowerment Project being the most notable, and have been involved with many tenant programs. Fame San Francisco Chinatown restaurants are considered to be the birthplace of westernized Chinese cuisine such as food items like chop suey while introducing and popularizing dim sum to Western and American tastes as its dim sum tea houses are a major tourist attraction. Johnny Can was the proprietor of one of the first modern-style Chinese restaurants, which opened in 1953. Many of the district's restaurants have been featured in food television programs on Chinese cuisine such as Martin Yan's Martin Yan, Quick and Easy. Chinatown has served as a backdrop for several movies, television shows, plays and documentaries including The Maltese Falcon. Big Trouble in Little China, The Pursuit of Happiness, The Presidio, Flower Drum Song, The Dead Pool, and Godzilla. Noted Chinese-American writers grew up there such as Russell Leong, and Amy Tan whose experiences growing up in the neighborhood formed the basis of her book The Joy Luck Club and the subsequent film. Notable 1940s basketball player Willy Wu Wu Wong, who excelled in local schools, college and professional teams, was born in and grew up playing basketball in Chinatown. A local playground bears his name. Actor Bruce Lee, who was born at San Francisco Chinese Hospital before moving back to Hong Kong three months later, returned to the United States at the age of 18, residing in San Francisco's Chinatown for the first few months before moving to Seattle. See also 49 Mile Scenic Drive, 1877 San Francisco Riot History of the Chinese Americans in San Francisco, Kong Chao Temple, List of Streets and Alleys in Chinatown, San Francisco. References Further reading External links, Chinatown History, from the University of California, San Francisco Chinatown.